Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome to a bit of Sharp Edge Chat and well, today I'm just going to have a word with you about my top five tools for me. Um, it's a bit of an extension from my workshop tour video where you all had a nosy at my stuff. But this is basically my favourite bits of kit and the stuff that I use all the time and I enjoy using. So, um, to kick things off, this is one of my favourites. This is a 12 volt driver. This one's a Milwaukee. It came with two 2 amp hour batteries. Um, <coughs> I find the batteries last really well for these things. Um, now as woodworkers, you know, we often like having a second, a second driver. Uh, we often have two combi drills. Now for what I do in here, I found that a second, a second 18 volt combi drill would be overkill really for what, for what I need. And I picked this up for a hundred quid. Um, I think they're generally a bit more expensive than that. Again, I'm a big fan of these woodworking tool shows. There's often sort of good deals on certain items and this was one of those things that was on, on offer at the time. I picked it up and it's never been far away from me since. I find I use it all the time. And because it's small and compact, it often comes in handy using it in places where another drill, another 18 volt combi drill would just be either too big or overkill. So I absolutely love this. It, it's, um, it comes with a, a, hex, a quick release hex nut attachment. Whoops. So it only takes the, the hex bit fittings. Like I say, it's fundamentally for driving. And it's um, pretty, pretty powerful to be honest. So I've just got a piece of timber there. I've got quite a heavy gauge screw. And that will pretty much drive into that. For a 12 volt machine, that's pretty good. What? Oh, lost me chair. So yeah, I love it. I use it all the time. It charges quickly. And it's just a pleasure to use. Good hundred quid well spent. So if you're kind of looking for a second driver, but don't want another 18 volt combi drill, you know, something like that is well worth having a lying around. Next. Um, I'll go with these. I love these. The Veritas um, hand saws. I'm going to say this one is a cross cut. I've got a rip, the large tenon, and a dovetail. Now, compared to this, for example, this is a half decent saw. You know, this is something I picked up. A while ago, it cost about 25 quid. But using this compared to this is just worlds, worlds apart. So, if you don't have endless amounts of money, I mean, for, the, for what they are, they are sort of heading towards the expensive side for a saw. You know, these are about 65 pounds each. Um, but if you can afford them, they are just lovely to use. I use them all the time. And especially having both the crosscut and the rip, it's hard to explain if you haven't used them, but you will notice the difference when you try to rip a piece of timber with this and then use the actual rip saw. It just does the job so much better. So these, I think they are just just in the right area to tempt me price-wise to buy them. They look sexy and they're great to use. So those, I love those. Next is this big bad boy. This is a Hitachi 2000 watt router and I cannot fault it. Let me give you some details. 
This is available in Screwfix and I'm sure other places, but I just happen to have a Screwfix catalogue at hand. Right. Comparing this to its rivals, let's say. So we're talking about the Makita equivalent and the DeWalt equivalent. Now then, Hitachi 2000 watt, Makita 2100 watt, slightly more powerful and a hundred pounds more expensive I might add. The DeWalt is a 1600 watt and still more expensive. So this is available for 179 quid. The Makita, 379 quid. That's 200, that's 200 pounds more expensive. That's crazy. And the DeWalt is 269.99. Now then, the Makita has a depth of plunge at 70 mil. This, 65 mil. So for five mil, I don't think it's worth 200 quid. The DeWalt plunge stroke, 62 mil. Um, the Makita weighs 6.1 kilos. The Hitachi weighs 5.2. Um, all Everything else considered, you know, your variable speed control, soft start, half inch, quarter inch collets, uh, your guide bushings, it comes with a fence. It doesn't have the best fence in the world, but you can soon adapt the fence, you know, run a baton across it and make it workable. It doesn't have the longest reach fence, again, but it's, again, it's how often do you really use that? If I was, do, if I was using it for running dados or uh, housing joints in a, a board or a sheet of ply something like that I would use a I've got a parallel edge clamp so I would just set up my ed, my edge clamp and run the router against that instead of using a fence along the edge of the material which again your, your fence however long your fence is it will only get so far so the Makita has a better fence but if you you know if you if you get if you get excited by having a good fence on your router, knock yourself out and pay another two hundred pounds. But um, again, it, it was just a no-brainer for me. So I, I had a go with it, and I absolutely cannot fault it. The one of the things I love about it is it has a definitive on-off button. I don't like routers where you have to hold the trigger and use them. So I will often kind of use the router. You know, like so, and I'll, I'll hold the base, I'll have one hand on and, you know, I'll move from side to side, depending on the task I'm doing. So I love the fact I can turn it on, use it, turn it off to stop it. Um, when locked in position, it's got absolutely no play in it whatsoever. That bit doesn't move, it's very, very stable, very solid. The locking mechanism locks like nobody's business that it absolutely doesn't move i've never had any experience of it vibrating free or coming loose it once it locks it's solid um it doesn't have a micro adjuster again for me it's not something i use all the time uh, it's not something i need to use all the time if ever i can pretty much set the router up where i need it and once it's set in position i make my cuts and if I need to finally adjust it, it's doable, it's slightly fiddly, but you know, you can slightly adjust it up and down. But the micro adjuster thing is not a big deal for me. And I think that's everything I've got to say about it. But I absolutely love it. For the, for the price that it is, compared to its competitors, it's just a no-brainer. So I would recommend that for a top-end high-power workshop router it's awesome right so that's three and next ones are my rider bench planes if you could just get into woodworking or you've been woodworking a while and you kind of like nice tools that do the job well and these are really, really impressive since I've had them. And I've had them about, you know, five or six, four, five, six months now, something like that. So 
So I've, had, I've used them for, for a while and they are just great to use. And I've previously stated that I think these are a better entry level bench plane than a Stanley or a record equivalent. How inconsiderate. Excuse me. Hello? Right, where was we? Sorry about that. Bench planes. Yeah, so I don't have the money to either want to pay or physically have it to pay for the Veritas planes, Lee Nielsen planes, really high end, top, top expensive planes. And I've found since using these, I mean, I've never used them to compare it against, so I really don't know. Maybe they adjust better, maybe they're slightly easier to use and set up. I don't know. But I've used these, I've had no problems with them. I can plane stuff from morning till night with these. And again, in comparison to what you would call entry level planes, your records, your Stanleys, these are heavier than they are. The blades are thicker. So there is just more mass, more oomph when you're working with the wood. And it, there's less chatter and vibration. Um, yes, a, a Stanley plane, a record plane works fine if you, if, you, if you tune them up and get them set up nice. You know, Paul Sellers will tell you all day long that that's all you need. But um, for the price that these are, they are just so good for the value for money. And again, the weight and the, the force behind them, it just makes planing a pleasure. So I really enjoy using these. And it's not often I am surprised, but you know, sometimes things seem too good to be true, in a sense, where you look at something and you think that looks and feels quite high end but it doesn't have the price tag of something high end and you expect something to be wrong with it um, so for the price that these are at I think they're terrific so anyway that's enough about those rider bench planes from Axminster <clears throat> I think they're great and number five again this is something I use all the time my set of Narex chisels now we can talk all day long that's one of the downsides of the narex chisels they're very round so they roll on your bench okay the smaller ones especially larger ones it's not such a problem so they they are round they don't have a flat side but they are on the other hand comfortable to use in the hand because they are round and smooth so i don't particularly until now find the rolling element an issue we're getting back to the tool themselves, we can talk all day long about different types of steel um, from your chrome venandum, if that's the right word, all your way up to your high end O2 steel and your VS2 or whatever the new top tool steel is. Um, these are made in the Czech Republic and as I understand it the steel is quenched in salt as opposed to oil which alters the molecular structure of the steel slightly. Um, I found that the steel's great, they come very flat, very little um, attention needs to be done to the backs of these. Uh, they sharpen up quickly, they last a reasonable amount of time. I mean you'll always have to sharpen your chisels, I sharpen fairly regularly but I try to sharpen, I try not to wait until my chisels are blunt before I sharpen so I kind of I try to sort of sharpen as I go if I've used a particular chisel for quite a lot of work I make a mental note of it and I resharpen that sort of chisel I give it a few few stro uh, a few wipes on the stone you know regardless of whether it needs it or not but um, again for the value that these are I probably like you, I don't have a bottomless pocket of money to go out and buy, you know, a £400 set of chisels. So I think I, again, this, I picked these up at the woodworking show. Um, what did I pay for these? For the set of six. 
somewhere in the region of 60 quid, I think. I think I paid for all these at the time. I think generally, um, wherever sell these are probably slightly more expensive than that. But again, that was kind of a price that I got at the woodworking show at the time. But uh, for that kind of for that kind of price range, and having used them for a long time now, I love them. I think they're great. I can um, you know I can chop mortises with them. I can uh, pair away at dovetails. I can pair down um, large tenons and shoulders. And they pair really nicely, take really clean shavings with a really sharp edge. So, again, just good value for money. I love them. And finally, those are my top five sort of tool tools. As we, as woodworkers, we need you need an accurate kind of you need an accurate square, a good straight edge, a a a, a, a ruler, an accurate ruler of some description. Um, one of the things I wouldn't be without is the Veritas marking gauge or a marking gauge of this similar style by whoever makes them. Um, uh, this is the only one I've ever used so I can't compare it to any other sort of um, imitations but again I just love marking my stuff out with this gauge I love it so that's another thing that I really really like and finally last Probably above everything else is my bench. Probably my number one tool. I use it every time I'm in here and every time I make something. So one of my subscribers, his name's Ben Green. Yo, what up, Ben? He was asking um, if you could take a closer look at my bench. So Ben, this bit is for you, dude. Okay, so my bench, really quickly. Made of pine, sapele, oak, a uh, big chunky frame, top made separately, plain flat, dropped on, mortise thin, locked in with uh, coat screws from underneath. Um, the leg vites, like I say, solid oak face. It will open about as far as this, which if you're doing really large pieces, which I hardly ever, ever, ever use, it's generally sort of there and onwards but it applies tons of pressure it really does um, it runs on a, a guide leg under here which has holes in it every sort of half inch or something like that so you basically set your leg vise to the rough thickness of your material for argument's sake it could be that so you set it in the approximate area and then you take a screwdriver or a metal pin through the nearest hole at the bottom. That stops pressure driving it in at the bottom which will then pull the top out because the screw is kind of in the middle. So once you start to crank on it the pin engages, it stops the bottom being pushed in. So all the force from the, the vice screw is now pressing in against here. So you can crank that, the life out of it, and that is absolutely locked in place. So I can work on that, you know, very happily without it slipping. And this is the main purpose of a bench, is to hold, hold your work in place while you're working on it. So that is the leg vise. Moving down this end, we've got a tail vise. It's uh, or a wagon vise or whatever they call them. Let me bring you down. So the tail vise at this end works in conjunction with the dog holes that run the length of the bench. So this tail vise it bolts to the side of the bench, the screw runs through and it anchors, screws into this sliding block which is on runners. So as you wind it in the block moves back and forth. So you pop up a dog, take a white piece, could be that for argument's sake. You take a second dog and drop it in and then you use this to, to close the distance and then to squeeze it. So again, work piece is now secure on the, on the, on the, the bench. I can now work on that with whatever I'm doing, planing it, sanding it, you know, I could run a router along there, no problem. So again, tail vice, excellent, love it. 
Another problem you might encounter when you've got a large piece or a component you've already made. This is a, a panel door I've been I've made recently. Um, so again, say so I just glued that and uncramped it, and I want to you know plane the the joints here to flush these all off. You know I can't just start planing that because that's not secured to the bench. So again, I can't really get my dogs on there. So I've got an angle there that I could slip out. So. Like in conjunction with the dog holes, you can buy these things. I think these were 20 pounds for a pair from Axminster. You drop these into your holes. And again, with holes every sort of couple of inches, you can get a good range of positions as to what you can hold and where you can hold it, and you know, spin these around to wherever you need. So again, that basically acts just like an F-clamp. You can kind of lock that in, take a bar clamp, squeeze that, you know, that is now not moving anywhere, so again, you know, you could grab your plane, work on that, and it's not going to move, it's just that third hand you always need, so, and again, one final, one final instance, knock that out of it. Say you was working on a really long board, something like that. Now I can, I can squeeze that up and hold that, you know, that's not going to gonna move especially. There's a lot of force on there. But over here, if I, you know, if I was playing in this edge, you know, just the, the mechanics of it will, will move that. So again, you can take another one of your your bench hold, uh, holders, pull a, a horizontal hole in your leg, squeeze that to the side of your bench, you know, and now that is solid, I could work on that. So you see what you see, it's kind of got all bases covered, it's very versatile in holding your work down, it's awesome, I love it. Ben, thanks for asking. I hope that helps. Alrighty then. So that was my top five favourite bits of kit. Now obviously I could have included my table saw and my planer thicknesser, which are very good quality, expensive bits of kit. But I didn't buy those. I was fortunate enough to be given those. And yes, I use them all the time and I love them. I buy rough timber and machine it myself. And I love them. But not everybody can justify either having the space for them or the financial means to, to buy machinery of that caliber. Um, so these other things that I've discussed today are my general favorite day-to-day -day woodworking go-to tools and I love them. Uh, one more thing, it is that time again. You know I love these woodworking uh, power tool shows, it is the Midlands woodworking and power tool show coming up on the 18th and 19th of March. It's in Newark. Tickets are £6 for practically letting you in for free. Tickets are £8 if you don't buy a ticket and just turn up. So I've got my ticket. Uh, if you see me there, come say hi. But I will leave a link in the description below if you want to buy a ticket and go check this out, you know, if you've got a workshop or a garage or a shed or anything like that and you're just interested in this kind of stuff. Um, if you're in the market for maybe a chop saw or a band saw or a disc sander or a pillar drill or, you know, odds are you can sort of get a better price than you probably can find, you know, on the market in retail stores at the, at the moment. So um, just go check it out. Uh, so that's, uh, I think that's everything for today. Thanks for hanging out with me. Good bit of chat. Uh, I will see you soon. Love y'all.